we embark on another exciting year of Arizona Athletics. Um, you know, wanted to reflect first on a little bit of the past year and just talk about a few things. And then we're certainly going to have a chance to uh, go back and forth with some questions and, and, and other things that I might be able to address for you. Uh, but we really had an excellent year um, in the classroom, you know, in competition, um, in the community, um, on our fundraising side. It was really a tremendous year. We had our highest overall fall semester of a grade point average of a 3.09 you know, which was followed, that was in the fall. We followed that in this spring with another record, set, record setting uh, GPA of a 3.17. You know, our current uh, overall GPA of our student athletes is over a 3.2 now um, of our cumulative GPAs with our, you know, nearly 500 student athletes is quite remarkable. Um, and that's a goal we're very, very proud of. It's been seven straight semesters of over a 3.0, and each one of those semesters breaking the previous semester. So um, again, doing the, the, the right things in the classroom. We set a new department record uh, with our graduation success rate, which is uh, reported by the NCAA through their database, which is a really key national metric uh, regarding academic success on campuses. Uh, that is at 87%, the highest ever by this program. We had five student athletes that were COSIDA All-Americans, academic All-Americans. That is the second most in a, in a single year um, in the history of this program. We had three student athletes that were named Pac-12 Scholars of the uh, Athletes of the Year in their respective sports. One of the highest honors that you can have um, in the Pac-12. So, you know, these outstanding academic accomplishments were certainly rivaled by uh, what a tremendous competitive uh, success among our programs uh, on what were some of the biggest stages. You know, 14 of our programs competed in the postseason in their respective uh, sports, including deep runs that have been well documented uh, by our women's basketball program going to the national championship game, um, our softball program going to the College World Series in Mike Candrea's final year, um, baseball going to the College World Series again, uh, men's tennis for the first time ever going to the Sweet 16 um, and having a, a Pac-12 Coach of the Year in, in uh, Clancy uh, Clancy Shields and our women's golf program going to the semifinals of the NCAA. The only program um, that has gone to the final four of women's golf um, in the country uh, three consecutive times. So it's pretty remarkable. Obviously winning at one and getting to the final four in the semis, uh, that's, that's just a, a tremendous accomplishment for our, our women's program. You know, our men's program obviously won the Pac-12 championship. You know, we had uh, a total of uh, nine team and individual Pac-12 championships as well. 30 student athletes from 10 different programs on our campus earned All-American honors. We had 20 former or current student athletes um, and coaches who competed in Tokyo in the Olympics, um, three silver medalists and a bronze medalist. Um, so again, the, uh, the department excellence was accomplished uh, at you know, just a remarkable level. And it was done so uh, over the last year, you know, 18 months, however we're counting this now, under really uh, the pandemic, really uh, difficult circumstances, challenging circumstances. Uh, we continued our commitment um, towards innovation um, and excellence uh, as we created uh, you know, our own in-house uh, name, image, and likeness program. Uh, really the Arizona Edge um, in collaboration with Eller uh, School of Management, College of Management and the Rogers College of Law, as well as some outstanding um, national leaders in the field uh, in building what I think will be uh, one of the very finest NIL programs for our student athletes. Their ability uh, to develop business relationships, partnerships with community um, and, and really grow, grow their brands, um, learn more about that side of, of uh, their future lives. Uh, what is now current and future lives, and I think that will serve them in incredibly well. So, uh, you know, also our community support through uh, this really difficult time, this unprecedented time of the global pandemic, you know, our department was able to fulfill its mission to provide the key opportunities for our student athletes to become academic, athletic, and life champions. That's our goal, that's our purpose, is to serve our student athletes so that they can have incredible experiences on our, on our campus. And I want to commend our development staff and thank our incredible supporters for another outstanding year on that side where we raised um, over $26 million, which is, again, an outstanding year. Uh, I call it in that, in that series of another record year, a record setting under just really uh, it's about $8 million more than the previous year. Um, but that allows us, one, 
uh, to serve our student athletes so that they can have that kind of, a, of uh, experience here, that we can impact their lives. And it was also a key element, quite frankly, and we're going to talk about budget in a little bit, um, uh, of dealing with and, and, and uh, the challenges of our financial situation. It was a key element, and it really reduced the, uh, the overall impact. So as I said, we, we faced some really unique and challenging budget times in uh, 2021. Um, our operational side of the budget, we closed the 2021 year with a, a, a $26 million deficit related to the COVID uh, impact. Um, that was our overall reduction uh, because of, you know, revenues were down and certainly we still had a numerous uh, expenses, but we had a $26 million deficit. Um, in addition to that, it's no secret we navigated um, and, and continue to navigate the uh, additional costs uh, associated with coaching transitions. Um, in, in 2021, we had about $10.5 million worth of coaching transition expenses. Um, we will incur an additional 4.3 to close that out in the next budget year in 20, uh, 20, uh, 21, 22, getting ahead here a little bit. Uh, but uh, so that you know, over that two year period on our coaching buyout, uh, that includes the contractually obligated buyouts uh, that are you know, in our contracts, as I say, to $14.8 million. So uh, to, to manage that and uh, to go forward, uh, Intercollegiate Athletics has worked with the university um, to identify a bridge funding loan uh, process that will address these two issues. Uh, the loans will be uh, uh, over a 15 year period for the payback. And we'll, we fully intend and will strive to pay those off earlier as we, uh, again, begin to roll into opportunities to generate significantly more revenues with fans in the stands, uh, the growth uh, nationally, our growth of our television package, you know, from a conference level, all of those pieces will help us grow our revenues and, and uh, likely uh, address this, um, this deficit position through those years much, much sooner than the 15-year payment. So, so here we are a week before classes. Um, really ready to ride our momentum of last year's success, a real historic success, um, and, and kind of capitalize on the buzz that is around this program. We've got outstanding coaches and leaders and, and five new faces, as you all know. You know, Jed Fish in football, Tommy Lloyd, men's basketball, uh, Becca Moros in soccer, uh, Caitlin Lowe uh, in, in softball, and then, of course, Chip Hale, one of our all-time great players in baseball, uh, leading that program. So um, our student athletes and coaches will continue to strive for championships for excellence in everything that we do. That's what this program is grounded on. Um, so the excitement on our programs and uh, our community's everlasting and just generous support uh, has been impressive and I look forward to another terrific year. You know, a couple, just a couple quick points and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have a little conversation and, and look forward to your questions and, and comments. But uh, um, there is a lot of momentum. Our football program, uh, we're renewing our season tickets right now. We're at a 90, virtually a 94% renewal rate with over 11,000 of those tickets renewed. We've sold over 2,800 new season tickets uh, already and still moving. Called the ticket office. It was still, you know, daily continuing to sell tickets. We're in the renewal process for our men's basketball program, which we've renewed over 92% of those tickets. We've also sold 250 new season tickets in men's basketball. So, uh, and those will continue to go right until the uh, the beginning of the season. Um, women's basketball. We've already sold. We're, we will begin our renewal process um, here very shortly. Uh, we've already sold over 2,000 new season tickets for women's basketball. Um, our last, uh, in, in 2019, we had about 2,800 total season tickets. So we're looking to renew those 2,800 and uh, combine that with at least this 2,000 as we stand today, that number will grow significantly, I'm sure. So lots of, uh, lots of uh, new excitement and opportunity in our women's basketball program. You know, and as, uh, as Matt said, we're gathered in this facility. I think this is a great example of what we continue to do to chip away at the fan experience, at the stadium, the things that we need to do to um, provide for our fan base, but also look for ways to maximize uh, the physical structures around our, our football stadium and around our athletic facilities. But during the pandemic, partnering with Club Corp to build this full service 365 days a year club um, that is also utilized on game days, of which is sold out. All of our premium spaces are sold out for football um, uh, in this area. So we're, we're really excited about that. I think it just shows, uh, again, more positive momentum um, going forward. So uh, we also have, uh, we'll be, embarking on a new partnership with our food service and concessions in all of our athletic facilities, including here inside of uh, Arizona Stadium with Aramark, a national leader 
uh, that will provide tremendous opportunities for our fan experience. We're very excited about that and the growth there, both on the revenue side, but on the experience side. And uh, so a new provider throughout our entire stadium. And um, that's, that's what, as I started with, that's always been our focus is to kind of chip away. And even during these difficult times, we've addressed some of those things. We will continue to be addressing um, our facility structure and the ability to, to make this a great place, a destination place for our student athletes, but also for our fans that, like, that love uh, this program and want to support it and provide us the opportunities to generate the revenues to reinvest in the program. So with that, I'm going to stop. I appreciate you bearing with me and uh, look forward to some comments. I feel like it's a little too formalized standing up here in front of everybody, but uh, I, you know, again, glad to have you here and have you here for lunch and uh, look forward to sharing your thoughts about uh, I'm sure lots of different things we've got national issues we've got conference issues we've got uh, localized issues here with our programs and uh, but I think uh, there's a tremendous positive energy around what's happening at Arizona and in this in this program specifically and uh, some of the movement nationally will be very beneficial for the for Arizona athletics so with that um, I I'm open for anything Matt you want to Jay. <laughs> it's all about the money. Show me the money. Well, we, we really, uh, you know, we really ended up much like I discussed, I think, in a previous time um, that we were together, our, our revenues were down about $45 million. Okay, that didn't change significantly. Um, we, we mitigated that in a number of ways. Uh, obviously, redu reducing um, our expenses, reducing sport budgets, reducing administrative budgets, um, really trying to, to be very, very aware of our, of our expenses across the board. Um, we certainly had to make some, some personnel moves that were incredibly difficult. Uh, we continue to hold line and, and have a number of uh, kind of frozen positions and positions that we haven't filled. But uh, um, that, that's where, where we were on that. Was the, was the $26 million about, I mean, are you happy with that? Uh, I, I think it's, you know, I think all, all things considered, I'm very proud of where we landed. I'm proud of what our staff did how our coaches did what they did to not impact the student athletes experience. We have an obligation to the young people so that they can meet their educational and athletic goals um, and have the experience while they're here, provide them the resources necessary to do that. And we didn't, we were able to do that. We, were, we didn't have to impact them virtually in any way. A lot of other people took it on the chin and really uh, tightened their belt so we could maintain that philosophy. So that's, um, I'm, I'm proud of that. And uh, you know what, we'll work our way out. We're in this thing together. We have an excellent plan, and we'll work our way out of that in a really responsible way. Ryan? I know the Pac-12 extended a line of credit a year ago to wherever universities wanted to take that. Mm -hmm. Is this bridge loan in addition to the money was taken from the Pac-12, or is it separate? It, it's separate. We did not take a, a, a loan from uh, the Pac-12. The, the, the Pac-12 was very uh, forward and, and aggressive in that manner. Uh, we uh, worked directly with the university to build that uh, that bridge funding mechanism internally, and so we have that through the University of Arizona. What makes that one better than the other? One? Is there uh, you know, I, I think we evaluated at all levels. Okay, we we looked at it. Our financial people internally on campus were involved in the actual creation of the the Pac-12 um, bridge plan. Uh, I think when it all boiled down to as, as each campus evaluated their status in real time or it, it just became more apparent it would be more appropriate for us to do that internally uh, with our university um, as, as, a, as a member of the university along with a number of other departments let me add on this on this campus that all have uh, entered into similar relationships. The university maintains that's a better way to um, to utilize the resources that the, the, the campus has. We'll pay that back. We'll pay that back with interest um, to the university uh, through the 15-year plan. Rich. $26 million shortfall, uh, does that include the buyouts for coaches or is that on top of Yeah, the, tw the 26 is just our operational um, uh, deficit position. The, uh, the coach, that's a separate, our separate package, our compensation issues uh, that we have with the coaches. So that's a different element of a position that, we're, that we've, again, put together a financial package to pay off. Follow back up with that. Yep. Where are you? You talked to any of your um, uh, peers at other schools on where Arizona sits as far as the Pac-12 goes, deficits and, and 
such? Uh, you know, I, I, I think I'm like all of you. I've, I've monitored it a little bit through the through the media sources. I'm, you know, I think we're we, we kind of sit right in the in the middle of that. Um, you know, everyone has dealt with this in different fa in different ways, but uh, there's been certainly several that are, are much uh, higher than we are and, and some that are lower. But uh, I think, again, I feel good about the, the steps we took, um, and I feel very good about the plan and the, uh, the collaboration with our institution, uh, our president, uh, our financial department to uh, make sure that we've got a good plan going forward. So Jason. Yeah. I wouldn't. I don't know the number, the exact number, Jason. We don't have that. I mean, we'll, we'll, we do monitor that. Um, yes, there is a uh, a checkoff system through our compliance department that, when our student athletes want to enter into agreements and business partnerships with with uh, people, that they come through and and there's an educational process and a, a a series of steps that they need to take so that we know what's what's happening. So, you know, we can have that inventory. I don't have it right at the. Uh, I I would say. Again, I'm off the cuff. Not as many as you might assume right away. I think a lot of people are trying to feel their way through uh, what is this and how to do it and how do you partner up. And, and, and we're growing, too. Our program is growing. How do we make introductions? How do introductions occur? Uh, we've, got a, we've just launched the, the Arizona Marketplace yesterday, you know, ways for, for, again, both business community and student athletes to enter in and, and see where there might be an arrangement that could be, um, you know, that, that makes sense for both parties. So that's kind of the introductory piece to that. And all of those have mechanisms to... Um, you know, to, to monitor and to, uh, and to check it off and, to, and again, take roll of how many people we have in the program. Love. Um, various uh, NFL teams and colleges have started to announce their attendance policies as it relates to being vaccinated or having more masks and so forth. What is the policy going to be for U of A football games? Well, we'll follow... Yeah, we'll follow the lead um, as it stands with the university through their... Um, um, you know, their recommendations and their mandates. Uh, we'll follow that lead just like the rest of the campus um, that at this point, you know, is, is masking in indoor facilities if you, and, and taking into account social distancing. Um, and that, you know, for outdoor um, large events, there's, uh, there's not that requirement. We have lots of indoor spaces here inside the stadium as well that would require, um, you know, masking or significant social distancing if there was not masking. So we'll, again, we will follow right along with the university protocols and and recommendations. Yeah, that, Justin. Does the, the game in Las Vegas have any effect since Allegiant Stadium is doing vaccination? Yeah, I, as I understand it, that um, that may not impact us. That uh, you know, is that just a uh, Raiders only? Is it an Allegiant Stadium policy? We're still working through that. Uh, we'll, as, as as many of you know, we'll play there the first week of our football season versus BYU, and so we're looking for a a, a definite. Um, response to that, but it's our understanding that um, vaccinations would not be required that first week, that it goes into effect the next week when the Raiders play. It's my best shot at it. Yeah. About two years ago, you laid out a vision for updating and renovating the west side of the football stadium. Is that still in the cards? Well, uh, hey, it, it's always in the cards to continue to improve our facilities, and maybe we have to do that in different ways. Um, we, we laid that plan out. We still have that. Um, we still want to uh, identify um, facility improvements across the board. Um, and so we'll see, keep chipping away at the, the football stadium when it becomes, um, you know, when we have that opportunity. We've got to be smart about that as we carry a deficit, too. Um, so with an operational deficit, not just a debt service to facilities that obviously has um, payback mechanisms to it. So um, we're going to be wise about that. But in the midst of this, again, you know, we've uh, we raised a significant amount of money, remodeled all of our football facility, the Lowell Stevens uh, football facility and offices. Uh, we're embarking on a very aggressive fundraising uh, program for our golf program uh, to develop a training facility and a really home for Arizona golf for our student athletes. Um, we're going to do some more renovations at High Corbett. Uh, that are related directly to our student athletes. Um, we have some issues that we want to address at soccer and track and field. You know, so those are all components that are really important to us um, that we'll have to be very you know, uh, strategic about how we approach it. David. Uh, Dave, the, the department jumped back into the top 30 in the direction of outstanding this year. What are your annual benchmarks in terms of the you guys should be in the next 
on the uh, Directors' Cup. Yeah. Well, I, I think, again, I think I'm very proud of how our, our teams have, uh, have performed. Um, you know, the Directors' Cup is, um, has evolved through the years, and we want to be very, very competitive. And I think uh, being a top 25 program in the, in the Directors' Cup is, is an outstanding accomplishment. We'll continue to strive to be uh, as high as we can be there. You know, and if we can, a couple of our programs that maybe traditionally had been in postseason that weren't, uh, that, that number would have even been higher. So we'll continue to do that and put people in postseason and, um, and have programs that uh, are very successful, and I think the results will, will show in the Learfield Cup. Yeah, Jason. Where do you, um, kind of a loaded question, but where do you stand on the Pac 12's role in, in realignment? Uh, you know, I, lots of conversation now, obviously, because of the Texas Oklahoma move. Um, I'm I'm very confident in our position as a conference, okay, with uh, with our commissioner um, and his role. I'm confident in his leadership in that. I think we, there's no question you have to be in the conversation. You have to be monitoring what's going on. You have to be looking for ways to maximize, um, you know, the, an alliance or scheduling opportunities. All of those pieces are something that isn't new to just the last couple of weeks. You're always looking for those kind of things. But uh, – We've got to be aware of how to keep the Pac-12 current, competitive, opportunity to grow, to become a stronger conference, uh, to be involved in the college football playoff. You know, our focus is really very central in to be a major player in the in the in the playoffs. So those are all components. And we want to be good at everything. We want to be and we want to be a strong brand that the, the Pac-12 is. I think there's some key things that we can be that can help vault us. So uh, it's important, and uh, and I think we want to be right in the conversation. There's no question about that. As expansion or realignment or or alliances begin to develop, we're going to be at the table talking about those things and doing what's right for our conference. The good thing is everyone has sat in the same room. We are a full conference dedicated to each other, staying together, and uh, you know, and that's really good. I think in the long run for us. So. PJ. Uh, you know, we're still in the in the in the searching of that to make sure. I think we're in the fundraising mode to make sure. And if we hit some thresholds, then we know we can move forward with it. And that will really determine how we would go with the program, and to a certain degree, where we may go. Um, you know, there's been numerous locations that have been tossed about and, and considered, but I, I think until we know exactly where we are in that fundraising spectrum, uh, we can't really decide for sure where we're going to go. But, you know, it, it's been uh, Randolph, it's been Tucson Country Club. Those are both very viable areas. Um, and, uh, you know, the Tucson Country Club has a lot to offer for our, our golf programs. And so we'll see where that fundraising goes. I think we're right in the, the point where we're going to make a decision pretty soon about it um, if, if some certain fundraising things come together. So, yeah, Rich. Um, conversations with the new commissioner. Uh, yeah. He's on his listening to her. When you have your first opportunity to talk to him, what are some of the things that you share with him about the University of Arizona concerns, challenges, things he needed to know that are important to this athletic department? Um, you know, I think it's been more general. He has not come to our campus yet. He's in a, a he's calendared to be here in, in the early part of September. Uh, so he'll spend three days on campus um, with a, a variety of audiences. So that, that's, I think, when we'll get really down to what, what our program is all about, where he can really touch it, feel it, and see it. But the conversations have centered around, hey, we, you know, we want a, a commissioner who, who is connected at the, at the campus level, understands what our student athletes are going through, but is also a, a very progressive, open-minded, um, you know, big thought person that can vault our conference forward. You know, we, we need to have relationships um, and we need to have a strategy that will help us generate more revenues long term. And I think that's been the focus. And, you know, it, it's interesting. You, George comes on and, and you think, well, hey, we're all going to come together. Let's keep it going or, or let's really zero in on some things. Big national issues. When you talk about NILs and all of a sudden conference restructuring, you know, it, 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 it's hard to stay focused totally on just what's happening on campus. So every part of that, and George has done a good job of balancing that. But he, I think he's been to three or four campuses and he does uh, he, he spends two to three days on every one of them and uh, gets to know it a little bit better. And um, he's, he is um, keenly aware of of the challenges that we have, and much of that falls back on the finance side. But um, but he's also um, 
he, I, I think I've shared this with many of you before, you know, coming from his role in Las Vegas, his, his entertainment side, sports side, big events, big thinking, um, uh, win-win kind of partnerships, he, a lot of stakeholders at the table, and how to get them all to, to feel like there's, it's successful for them. He's done those kind of things. That's the key when you're, when you're at this level as a conference commissioner, bringing all of those people together, uh, you know, corporate partners together, media people together for successful partnerships. Yeah, Jason. Um, the NCAA recently said that the, the rulings for all the ARB will kind of move quicker. Does that impact you guys in terms of the decision? Well, um, I, I don't know. I, I hesitate to answer it about speed. I know that they've um, they've uh, announced that they want to continue to move forward and move as swiftly as they can. Uh, we welcome that. We 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 would uh, we've been welcoming that for for a while, and so we look forward to that coming to a conclusion as quickly as possible. Yeah, love. So <clears throat> when BYU announced their NIL deal with the Power Bar company, the way that it was um, described was that the school itself quote-unquote broker the deal, does the Edge marketplace offer those types of opportunities? Can you do the same thing, or is it different? Uh, than, than uh, you know, I think everyone is trying to, uh, to find their way a little bit uh, without um, a, a national kind of regulation or guidelines, uh, without more structure, you know, from the association. It is a little bit uncertain exactly how people um, enter into and formulate deals. So, um, you know, our, our, our intention is not to, to go out and, and broker deals. That's not what we're into. Um, but we look for very um, effective, appropriate, um, you know, prosperous opportunities for student athletes and for our business community and others to partner up and look for ways to, you know, to be successful together. And I think that's the right way to do it. And so I don't know the details of the BYU one enough to really comment on specifically that. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything, any issues that have arisen that, that W that have really surprised us, I think. Uh, maybe other than there was a lot of speculation that this was going to, you know, explode quickly. Maybe it hasn't gone quite as fast um, as maybe some people thought or was maybe reported on to, that, that that could happen. I think other, you know, certain places have taken different strategies on how to how to lay it out or what to do. Um, hearing the backstories of some of those things too, were they really the deals that they were portrayed to be? Um, maybe they haven't always worked out that way. That would be my comment. Um, but uh, I don't think there's anything that has, I've said this before, it's, this thing's a little bit like, you know, flying the plane without instruments right now. We're, we're, we're up there, we know we got to land somewhere. Um, we can, we can keep it in the air, and we're doing a really good job of that. Uh, but we've got to figure out exactly all the components inside of it. Uh, and again, when you don't have national consensus or regulation, um, that, that's difficult at times. Different states doing different things. It's just pretty difficult to have a consistent pattern across the country. So hopefully, I'm hopeful that one day that will get to that point. So, But uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pro NIL. I think it's, I think it's the way to go. I think we'll, we'll handle it really well here. We'll do it, again, as I said, appropriately, effectively. We'll, we'll do what's right for our student athletes and our programs, um, and it'll help them in the long run. Yeah, right. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Just right. to clarify, there's no, there won't be capacity limits for Mikhail Warriors on the stadium. Uh, no, not at this time. Yeah, we don't have any. Again, we'll just continue to follow what the university uh, recommends, you know, health protocols, kind of that same line that we've had for a long time. But uh, no, no, no restrictions at this point. Can you share the details for the Little Olsen tribute? How much is family going to be involved? What can we expect? Yeah, we're, um, you know, we, we, we've, uh, unfortunately, when, when Coach passed, we weren't able to do that because we we're in the middle of the pandemic to really honor him and allow people to connect to it and, and come back and, and pay tribute to the great legacy of, of Coach Olson. Um, we're excited about that on September 12th. Uh, the families are involved. Um, it'll be a, a really neat tribute of, uh, uh, you know, probably centered around um, his former players and obviously coaches and others that have had a, had a big impact or were impacted by him uh, as, a, as a player or a coach. So I'm looking forward to it. I think, it'll, I think we all want to come together and celebrate uh, um, that incredible legacy. Uh, that continues today. So look, looking forward to that and glad we can get back together in, in McHale and do that. Has there been any 
any discussion internally or just in general find a way to get the international players involved in the NIL? Yeah, it, that's kind of one of those things that uh, that maybe, you know, back to the earlier question, that um, caught some people by surprise. And, yeah, I, I think we, we have a number of internationals across the board, uh, not just in our basketball program, or, but across the board that um, it seems like it, it is unfair, and I know there's a lot of work afoot to try to alter that. Now, that's obviously a federal law, federal regulation, so there's a lot of pieces to that. But um, we want to make sure that our international students can uh, be engaged in that as well. We think it's appropriate. Yeah, love. The, uh, the football facility over here has been remodeled pretty extensively. Mm -hmm. Do you want to get, you need a haircut or? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I do. I, it's been way too long. So. How did those conversations go with Jed and how is all of that paid for? It's all paid for, very simply, it's all paid for through, through donations. It's, it's all been privately funded. Um, our donors were tremendous. Um, I think they see the vision. They share the vision, uh, the enthusiasm about our football program. They are, uh, uh, it is wide and varied. Uh, lots of different people jumped on board to support um, our vision of, of the future. Uh, Lowell Stevens Building is a credible facility. Um, I think it was in, in, in need, like sometimes when you have a, a home, you need to remodel it and do some things. We needed to do that. And uh, we needed to have a, a wow factor, an impact factor. We also needed to be more functional. You know, our structure in our football program, uh, staffing-wise and, and uh, duty-wise is different than, than how it was designed from the way offices are set up, the, the, again, the functionality in the building. So that needed to be addressed as well. Um, and it was really about going out and sharing that story with people. And uh, they jumped on board very quickly. They can see the enthusiasm and the energy around our football program. Look, we've got to get better. We need to be better on the field. But uh, those are the building blocks that allow us to be successful in recruiting and showing our commitment to student athletes of what they can do while, when they're here. So. Um, Excited about that, really excited. And, and Jed played a huge role in, in making that happen from a fundraising capacity perspective. Yeah, David. David, you hired a, a male for your women's tennis program, you hired females for your softball and, and, and the soccer program. Speak to your philosophy on how you guys are looking for candidates for your women's program, how important it is to try to identify top female candidates for those programs. Well, Absolutely. You know, number one, we want to find the best coaches that are out there. We want the best coaches that are available and want to come to the University of Arizona. This is a destination place, and we want to help them be successful here. Um, I think it's only appropriate um, in our women's programs that we look for strong leadership in, in, from, from women. Uh, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. And as the, as the, the sports begin to grow, as um, females have participated for much longer now um, and been engaged in the support and uh, in the sport and, and want to make careers of that, we should pr help promote that and help take, uh, you know, help, uh, help grow that. It's good for sport. It's good for our, our women's sports. And, and, and quite frankly, on that side, I mean, um, we can have males coaching male sports. We can have women coaching male sports. I mean, we want the best people out there. And I think coaching is a tremendous calling and we want really good people to lead our student athletes. Um, I'm pleased that we have uh, some outstanding female leaders in, in our positions to, uh, to, to uh, lead those programs. It, it's, it's an important component. We'll continue to do that. Any other questions? No, no? Yeah. Yeah, happy to do that. Happy to talk uh, to anybody. And uh, again, thanks everybody for being here. It's going to be a fun year. Look forward to working with you and being around you as we cover uh, uh, another uh, chapter of um, Arizona history on the sports side. So thanks everybody.